What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ah! Your source for the music and music production news. Today, we'll be talking about Logic Pro getting a new update, a new update for Shaperbox, Sam Ash closing remaining stores, and more. Logic Pro has gotten the update that has all the Fruity Loopers in shambles. Yes, they've actually added stem separation capabilities. I always knew they could do it. They've added a new bass player and keyboard player. Stem extraction, hold your applause. And they've added something known as Chroma Glow which will instantly add warmth to tracks. The session players are what they consider a personalized AI driving backing band, which means it responds directly to what is happening in the song. Before this, they had it for drumming. Now they've added it for bass as well as keyboard. I feel like people would have thrown a fit about this, I don't know, five to 10 years ago. But at this point, with all the AI shit coming out, no one's even gonna bat an eye at this. It was trained in collaboration with some of the world's best bass players using AI and sampling technologies. You can choose from eight different bass players and guide the performance's complexity and intensity. It's funny, this actually kind of shits all over some of Unison Audio's plugins, such as uh, Ass Dragon. And then the keyboard player, the same sort of thing. Well, not for the part that you're all here for, at least the logicians. The stem splitter, it works like any other stem splitter. It splits it into four parts, the drums, bass, vocals, and other. Chroma Glow models the sounds of some of the greatest hardware. It has five different saturation styles to add warmth, presence, or punch. This will be a free update for existing users, and it'll be available on May 13th. It requires Mac OS Ventura 13.5 or later, or iPad OS 17.4 or later. This one I'm actually pretty excited about. I've been a big fan of native instruments glaze. You might even say I've been glazing it. For those of you that don't know, glaze is a vocal instrument for contact. It comes with vocal phrases as well as playable instruments that utilize vocals. They've included over 30 custom chord sets and background vocals. It has a total of 150 presets along with custom macros. Let's take a listen to it. all right not the most impressive demo i feel like with this sort of thing it's more so how you use it okay that one's a lot better they should have started with this one i feel like they're focusing a little bit too much on the vocals but i guess you know since it's a demo track they're trying to just sell you on the vocals they're going to include a lot of vocals in fact they basically it's basically only vocals drums and bass it seems like they might have sold me on this i wish uh <laughs> you know uh native instruments if you still want to send me some stuff i promise i won't make fun of the bags under that guy's eyes again <laughs> i promise i won't make fun of the bags under anyone's eyes again only mine all right unless that's not okay then then i won't even make fun of these It'll be your new go-to vocal instrument for everything from polished pop to edgy hip-hop. Because <laughs> hip-hop is so edgy, am I right, guys? Man, who are they getting to write this? Laying down vocal harmonies is a piece of cake. It's like an old white man wrote this. Rick Beato must have written this. You can get it now for $49. In other news, I've gotten a new tattoo. Let me know down in the comments what you think about it. In our next story, the Synthmaster 3 beta is now available. Some of the notable changes include a modular architecture, meaning each layer can have up to 16 modules, such as oscillators, modulators, filters, wave shapers, and up to 32 modulation sources. It comes with three 350 presets. They've added a new oscillator known as the V analog oscillator, which creates the oscillator shape in real time to mimic an actual analog oscillator. They've added a new wave shaper effect, a phaser filter, formant filter, comb filter. The key scaler in Synthmaster 2 has been improved and they're now naming it Scaler. <clears throat> The ball's in your court, plugin boutique, all right? There's actually a demo version, but it stops working after 30 minutes. You can save presets with the demo version, but you can only open them with the paid version, which is a clever move in my opinion. The demo emits noise at every single minute. This is starting to get to be a bit much here. Now this is why people get extended free trials. How am I supposed to enjoy using the demo when I'm interrupted by noise once every 60 seconds? You're gonna wanna get an extended free trial. If you get a regular trial, you're gonna have a bad time. If you regular demo, when you meant to extend a demo, you're gonna have a bad time. There's several other limitations as well, and there is no better reason to get an extended free trial. 
I don't think I need to explain to you what that means. There's an early bird price of $69. <laughs> yeah, really funny. In our next story, Cable Guys has released a free update for ShaperBox, ShaperBox 3.5.1. Each shaper has a favorite section now, which stores up to nine of your favorite LFO shapes. The LFO copy paste now works between different sections of the plugin. They've also fixed a few bugs. You can get it at cableguys.com slash shaperbox. Infiltrator is still better. In our next story, SoundCloud has launched a new feature known as the buzzing playlist. It is fan driven and is meant to spotlight new artists and music. There is a catch though. You have to be a part of their next pro program, which is their paid subscription program. And you have to opt in in order to have your songs analyzed by first fans. I don't know who's naming these things, it's weird. So apparently this first fans thing is a AI recommendation algorithm that uses machine learning to match people's taste to songs. After analyzing the song, it'll recommend it to 100 people and they claim they are real people and not bots, which is interesting because I feel like they've never really been able to discern whether someone is a bot or not on that platform. I mean, there are constantly bots commenting on any upload, so I'm not sure how they're able to discern that. <clears throat> Unless, of course, they know which accounts are bots and don't do anything about it because they want SoundCloud to look more active than it actually is. I must be crazy for thinking that, right? But they claim they will recommend it to people who will most likely like it based on their past listening behavior. After it recommends it to those first hundred people, it'll recommend it to a thousand. And then the ones that get the most engagement will be added to this buzzing playlist. This could be very useful to you SoundCloudies because it may introduce your music to new listeners, which could help create momentum and get you more listeners. This is actually really good because I felt like one of the large problems with SoundCloud is it doesn't really have a very good related algorithm and this could take care of that a little bit. In much stranger dark news, SoundCloud has also been apparently advertising illegal synthetic opioids, so has Twitter slash X. These drugs are known as Nietzines and were advertised across nearly 3000 posts on SoundCloud and more than 700 on X. And they would generally take form in short audio clips, which advertise the drug's name and dealer. And it would appear as the title of the track. So apparently you can get away with advertising anything on these platforms. I can't really say I'm that surprised about X or SoundCloud actually. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Sam Ash has closed the remainder of their stores. For those of you that don't know, Sam Ash is a family run music equipment store. And as you may guess, uh, it is due to the rise in people buying things online. Can't say I'm not guilty of that. They'd originally closed 18 stores back in March, and it looks like this was the final nail in the coffin. And according to Consequence Sound, Sam Ash has announced it's pulling the quarter inch plug for good. You happy with that one? You happy you got that one off? On the plus side, they are offering some large discounts to get rid of a lot of their equipment. You can even get some of these deals on samash.com. What the hell? All right, this might be one of the weirdest almost definitely sponsored editor's notes I've ever seen. Whether you're hitting up Sam Ash's closing sale or not, consider unlocking the power of SoundCloud with their best plan for artists, Next Pro, which includes unlimited uploads. I think this is an affiliate link. This is unheard of. I've never seen an editor's note which just contains an ad for something else unrelated. Consequence may earn an affiliate commission via the purchase of tickets through the above links. Hmm, naughty naughty. I know who's not gonna get a visit from Santa this year. Dude, I've never seen that though. An editor is not with something completely unrelated and it's just a fucking ad. That's fucking bizarre. Dude, they're just doing a fucking Fortnite dance and a dab on Sam Ash's grave and like, yo, buy fucking SoundCloud Next Pro. We get money from it. <laughs> hey, I got a great idea. I'm gonna add my own editor's note here. If you want more Weaver Beats content, you can get extra videos, outtakes, and more from the $5 tier on my Patreon or YouTube channel membership. I also have a second channel, all of which will be linked in the description. And our next story, Bitwig Studio 5.2 is out now, and they've added what they call a professional compressor, I'm not sure what makes it different than a normal compressor, as well as three hardware-inspired EQs. They are calling it Compressor Plus. <laughs> it's good. That's good, I like that. Let's uh, let's just go straight to the video here. Interesting, this looks interesting. Fuck dude, now they're doing the Fortnite dance and dabbing on Ableton's soon to be grave. Okay, maybe it's not a grave, but I don't know. Ableton's just not, it's not looking as good as Bitwick is these days. 
whatever it does, it does look pretty fucking sexy. I will say that. Oh God, who edited this? Oh man, I'm gonna watch this thing over and over again. Fuck, dude, they're, they're ahead of the curve on Ableton here. I want this in Ableton. What the fuck? I want stim splitting in Ableton. I want anything in Ableton. Please, give us something, Ableton. You guys are really slow. I'm not sure about your mental capacity, but I'm talking about you're slow with the features. Or you're slow to charge us on these features. You're just slow in every aspect. Not the mental capacity, though. Don't get upset. Undo for plugins. Oh man. We're just an intensive care unit as Ableton users, and Bitwig is just over here dabbing on us, unplugging and replugging in whatever machinery we need to be kept alive. It's unfair, man. It's really unfair. Ableton, you guys, you guys gotta get your shit together. Ableton, I'm gonna talk to you really quickly here. You're lucky that you have this legacy for being the first one to have this live integration with production. Because if it wasn't for that, or that you had your name out there before. DAWs such as Bitwig, you would have nothing. Like there's no reason to use Ableton over Bitwig at this point. We're paying more, we're getting less features. We're getting, those features that we are getting, we're getting way down the road. And then they charge us for them every time out the ass. Like I really think it's a matter of time before Ableton's gonna be gone from the ICU and just in the grave with fucking consequences sound, advertising some bullshit product and then dabbing and doing the floss over their gravestone while getting money from the affiliate link that they're posting in the editor's note. All right, we're gonna get like another update in like what, like a year and then maybe it'll have stem separation or something. I'm not gonna lie, I was talking shit about the FL Studio stem separation at first when it dropped, but the more I've been sampling and using loops lately, the more I've been wishing I could just do it straight in my DAW. I don't wanna have to export it and then run it through something such as Ultimate Vocal Remover and then find the file and then put it back in the DAW. I want it to be fast. I want it to be lightning fast. I want it to be consequence of sound, making an editor's note, promoting some bullshit fast. I will say this, the Compressor Plus is pretty beautiful. Bro, they're just dabbing on our corpses, man. Mouseless navigation is a breeze in Bitwig Studio 5.2. They don't even need mice now. They don't even need mice. Fuck. Undo for plugins. Have you no shame, Ableton? In other news, every other DAW is better than Ableton at this point. We got news on the beef front. Kendrick Lamar and Drake. I know some, of you, a lot of you guys are not going to care about this. I'm going to get through it really quickly, though. So Kendrick Lamar and Drake, they both dropped some recent diss tracks. Uh, in my opinion, Kendrick cleared him. Kendrick's newest one, Not Like Us, actually broke the all-time record for biggest single-day streams of a hip-hop song in Spotify history, which surpassed Drake. <laughs> in other news, Drake's OVO store in London was vandalized with the phrase, They Not Like Us, seemingly like the title of Kendrick's diss track. The biggest story to me here is I didn't know there was an OVO store. OVO is his label that he created. I don't know what the hell they're selling in that store, but apparently it's been vandalized. They're selling miners. They're selling miners. Allegedly. So Metro Boomin, the producer who made the song with Kendrick and Future originally that started this whole thing, he actually made a diss beat named BBL Drizzy. This is so convoluted and stupid. I'm just just pointing that out here. I, it's just it's the news, guys. I got to talk about stuff I don't care about that much. I stopped caring about this a long time ago. It's just too relevant to not talk about. Anyways, he created this beat called BBL Drizzy, and he invited all rappers on the internet in order to rap over it. And he said the best one will get a free beat. So it has everyone and their mama coming out and creating some stupid ass verse. Anyways, after he came out making this beat, it had a bunch of people digging up his old tweets where apparently he also looks like a pedophile. Now, am I saying Metro Boomin is a pedophile? No, I'm just saying he made some really, really sus jokes back in about 2011, 2012. And for some reason, every celebrity in existence was making really fucked up, really creepy jokes regarding like pedophilia or fucking kids and shit like that. And anyways, it has people calling him Metro Groomin instead of Metro Boomin. 
And that is really fucking clever. I just want to say whoever thought of that, shout out to you. Apparently Metro Boomin has been making, he was making some really sus tweets over a decade ago. I ain't even gonna read that one out loud. I'm probably gonna censor it. Like, how do you even explain this one? Walking through the grocery store with both hands in my khakis like a true pedophile though. Hashtag no pedo. Like what? What is the joke there exactly? Like, I'm not trying to be the punchline police, but I'll beat the charge, retweet, this girl is 13. Like, how do you explain that one? That's, that's bad. All right, let's see, Metro seeing all his old tweets resurface. <laughs> this is pretty fucking weird. She gonna suck me whether she like it or not? That's what the molly for. Yeah, that's some pretty date rapist shit. Got your little sister on some molly. She done ran through the whole squad. Oh, this one's pretty bad too. And I'm tweeting via web like a fucking child molester. What the fuck, dude? What the hell? So apparently there was a shooting at Drake's mansion. Apparently his security guard got shot. It is unknown if this is related to Kendrick though. As you can see, there's police caution tape there. Not really the best image, but it was probably taken from a drone like three miles away. All right, this one is fresh off the printing press, guys. Apparently, Native Instruments is launching a new subscription platform. It is a tiered subscription platform, which uh, has three pricing options, uh, 15 a month, 25 a month, or 50 a month. Jesus fucking Christ, who do they think they are? Wow, they're charging entirely too much for this. The $15 a month one gives you access to 50 plugins. The pro tier gives you over 130. Thankfully, it will not replace their perpetual licenses. They're much smarter than Waves. I gotta say the price point on this is pretty fucking absurd. $50 a month? This will be coming in late 2024. I'm not sure why it's gonna take them so long to release this. They already, all the plugins are out already. All right, that is it for this episode of WNN, your source for the music, music production news. If you press the like button on this video, I'll teach you how to side chain hose. What the fuck did you just say? Nothing. Subscribe if you're new here. I do videos like this basically every single day with a few breaks here and there. I'll see you guys next time.